live on HDNet. From launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And liftoff of Discovery. The launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on a mission to the International Space Station. This is NASA on HDNet. Now reporting. Now let us show you the crew. This was a little over three hours ago uh, when they literally left their quarters, the second time now that they've gone through this drill. And there you see them coming out the door. The commander on your right, Rick Sturko, he's in his Marine Corps cap. Uh, his pilot, Kevin Ford, on the left. And in a moment, uh, you'll see the woman on the crew. There she is, Nicole Stott. And she's not coming home with the rest of them two weeks after launch. She's going to stay at their destination, the International Space Station, and is not due to return to Earth, in fact, until the next shuttle flight, which is scheduled to launch in mid-November. Okay, the clock's about to come out of the hold, and we'll go to that clock and watch it resume its count, which is a very positive moment for any launch. T-minus one minute and counting. One thing to watch for as she begins to rise off the ground in less than 60 seconds, and that is by the time the bottom of the shuttle clears the top of the tower, she's already, already going 100 miles per hour. One minute into the flight, more than 1,000 miles per hour. T-minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T-minus 31 seconds. CLS is go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T-minus 20. 20 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated. CLS is go for main engine start. We have a go for main engine start. And we have main engine start. Two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, celebrating its 25th birthday by racking up science and supplies to the space station. Houston now controlling the midnight ride of Rick Sturko and his crew to the International Space Station. Discovery rolling onto the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. Two seconds into the flight. The three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance down in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic. Discovery three and a half miles in altitude, four miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Standing by for the throttle up call now from Capcom Eric Bowe. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Rick Sturko, joined on the flight deck by pilot Kevin Ford, flight engineer Jose Hernandez, and Pat Forrester. Seated down on the mid deck are Danny Olivas, Christopher Fugelsang of the European Space Agency, and Nicole Stott, hitching a ride for three months on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. Pretty soon, we're going to see one of the key milestones of the flight. The two solid rocket boosters, those two tall, slender white rockets, they're the ones that gave Discovery her thrust to break the bonds of Earth. They will be through with their job. They'll be exhausted of their fuel, and they will separate from the shuttle and the external fuel tank. And you'll see it on this camera, which is attached to the external fuel tank. They'll fall back down to the Atlantic, but incredibly, only after rising another 12 miles first, just because of the momentum of this flight. Pretty soon, they're going 3,000 miles per hour. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computers steering the shuttle for its precise path to the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 54 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units. We'll now show you a replay cells. of that remarkable launch fewer than three minutes ago.
In real time, only about five minutes from now, Discovery, as we watch this replay again, will be traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. And at that point, the seven astronauts on board will be floating in zero gravity in space. So from this magnificent liftoff, it'll take them two full days, darn near 30 orbits of the Earth, to catch up with the space station, their target, and then less than two weeks after that, Two weeks after that, after traveling between five and six million miles, weather permitting, they will come back home. I think we have another replay to show you of that launch now just short of six minutes ago. This is the exclusive HDNet fish cam over the pond as she takes off. We'll see if any fish, any mullet jumped from the water. Single engine mistress means they could make it to that abort landing spot in Spain on just one engine, although they've got all three. Here's another replay, this taken from 3.1 miles away, the top of the vehicle assembly building. Right now, in real time, she's about seven and a quarter minutes into her flight and already going 12,340 miles per hour. Got out of the external fuel tank, out of the main three engines of the space shuttle. We'll just listen as they announce separation, and you will see what appears to be the orbiter Standing rising away, but in fact it's the external fuel tank with the camera falling away. Separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms a good main engine cutoff. Now standing by for external tank separation. External tank separation confirmed. Discovery now in its preliminary orbit. You can see the flash photography as Discovery fades away from the camera view. Good maneuver being com commanded by uh, Rick Sterko, maneuvering Discovery so that those cameras embedded in the umbilical well can perform that flash photography of the discarded external fuel tank.